is a magic number Yes it is It's a magic number Somewhere in the ancient mystic trinity You get three As a magic number Hello everyone, it's David for Studio One Expert. In this video we will have a look at another one of the new features of Studio One version 3, namely the splitter for audio effects. Now as you will see the splitter is a very powerful tool and enables you to do really crazy stuff, but we will have a look at two more conventional things in this video. First one will be to use it for parallel compression on drums, and the second case will be to process the low and the high end of a bass independently. Okay, so how can we access the splitter and what can we do with it? If we click on one of the new channel editor buttons, which have now on all tracks in version 3, we come to this macro control page and here on the left, on top, we have the routing icon, which brings us to this view. And here you can see the splitter, but we need to insert at least one plugin for it to work. So let's just insert a chorus go back to this page and now we can just grab this icon here and drop it above the chorus and now we have splitted our audio into two parts into two audio parts so we can process each of them individually per default it always splits the signal into two parts but we can enter more splits if we want here with a maximum of five so we can uh, stretch this window out but we are not limited to these five splits. We can use the splitter one more time, drag it for example here, use it one more time here, and as you can see, very quickly, we get a really, <laughs> very quickly, we get a really lot of stuff going on here. So you can quickly lose the overview, but of course, we will concentrate now a bit more conventional things. So let's have a look at how we can use this on um, to parallel compress drums. So let's have a listen to my drum kit that I have here. Okay, so what I would like to do is use a compressor to bring up the room tone of the drums more, uh, add a bit beef to it and tuck it in under the uncompressed drums. Normally, we would have to create a new bus send the drums there via prefader, insert the compressor there and uh, do our settings there. But now we will use um, the splitter to do exactly the same thing. Okay, so let me grab a compressor. I will use an 1176 clone for that. Let's start the playback again. I will use a fast attack and a pretty fast release too. High ratio. and really squash the crap out of my drums. Yeah. Of course, I'm killing all my transients now, but it doesn't matter because we will use this only in parallel. So that's where the splitter comes in. Let's open our routing page. Uh, we don't need it so big now. Go back here, you can freely resize it here. And let's insert the splitter here. And now we have uh, one path of the audio signal going through my compressor. And the other part, the right part, is unaffected by it. So it's just a pure signal. So we basically achieve the same as setting up a new bus in the mixer, putting the compressor there. But um, we have now only still one bus in the mixer for the drums. And thus we're having a better overview of the whole song, which is uh, especially important if you have mixes with a lot of tracks. So now we can listen to each audio path individually by muting the outputs of the parts here. So this is just the unaffected drum track. And this is our compressed uh, drums. And both together. And what we can do now is to use the output nav of the compressor to tuck it in as we would do it with a bus. So normally 
If we had to have the compressed on a bass, I would pull down the fader to zero and then slowly bring it up to have the amount of this uh, prior compressed signal as much as I want. And now I can do this just with the output put of the compressor. So. Yeah, that's about it. Barrel compression on drums without setting up buses, copying traps or any other fuss you normally have to do. And most importantly, you can use any compressor for this purpose. It doesn't have to have a mix knob, just use the splitter to achieve this. Okay, so let's turn the page and have a look at another application we can use the splitter for. In this case, I want to mix a bass guitar and I want to treat the low end of the bass and the high end of the bass individually, which is quite commonly done and uh, can really help you to have a real good low end, fat low end in the mix, but um, at the same time have a really clear high end, which helps you to, to really hear the notes also on small speakers. Now this mix I did still with uh, Studio One version 2, so I had not access to the splitter yet, so I used the conventional method. I duplicated the bass track and applied different processing on the two tracks. So let's have a listen first. As you can hear, the bass is playing very melodically and that's why it was really important for me to be clearly able to hear the notes it's playing. So what I did, this was what I started with. This is a pure DI bass track. So I duplicated the track in a range, then uh, inserted a pro EQ on one of them, rolled off completely the top end and on the other track I rolled off the low end at 500 hertz. So I have one track with the frequencies below 500 hertz and one track with frequencies above 500 hertz. I call them bass low and bass high. And then I applied um, different processing to both of them. So in this case I used uh, different M simulators. This is on the low end track. This is on the high end. On the low, I inserted a compressor to control the sustain a little bit better. And I boosted a little bit at 1.2k uh, just to help it cut through the mix a bit better. And this is how the bass sounds alone. <laughs> This is just the low. This is just the high part. And both together. Both together. And then both tracks are going into a bus where I have from Waves NLS, just console emulation, a little bit more compression to glue them better together, and a limiter, just to control some peaks which may get through, and a little bit of reverb. Okay, so now I'd like to recreate this exact same setup, but using the splitter instead of duplicating the track. So, how can we do that? First of all, let's get rid of these Pro EQs here because we will use a function in the splitter to achieve this frequency split. Then let's mute one of the tracks in the range because we will just use one of the tracks. I will go with the bass low. If we open one of the plugins on the tracks, then we also have access to the routing page. And now this is just our low track. So let's drag and drop the splitter here. 
You can see it uh, also split my two plugins, so it's no problem. I want to have this also on the left, so I just drag it back here. You can use the C, drag and drop everything everywhere as usually in Studio One. And if we click on the splitter, then we have all our functions here. And what we haven't talked about yet is the split mode here. So for the parallel compression of the drums, we use the normal mode, which just simply splits the signal without doing anything else. The channel split um, you can use on stereo tracks to process the left and the right side of the track individually. And the last one, which is very, very handy, is the frequency split option. So with this, um, you can set a frequency here. So and on the left side of the other path, only the frequencies below this point will be present. And on the right side, only the frequencies above this point. So since I had my Pro EQ uh, low cuts and high cuts set to 500 hertz each, I will just type in 500 here. So now I have the exactly same which I had with the Pro EQs. I have the frequencies below 500 hertz here on this side and above 500 hertz here on this side. So what I can do now is I simply grab and copy my plugins from my bass high track over to this right side here. So just grab them. I have my amplitude and my EQ. Okay, there is one thing missing to get the same exact result as I had before, because if you have a listen now, it sounds a bit different. That is because if you look here, I had my so-called bass high track at minus 0.8 dB and the bass low was at uh, 0 dB. So the high track was 8 dB softer, but here in the splitter, um, both paths have the same volume. So we need to decrease the volume of the right path by 8 dB to get the same result we had before. We could use the output knob of the last plugin of the chain for that, if it has one. But to get a bit better overview, I will just insert a mix tool and type in minus 8 there. Go back to my routing page. As you can see now, I have it uh, minus 8 dB less uh, on the right side. And this is quite handy that for the included Presonus Studio One plugins, you have access here on the left side to most of the parameters. So let's have a listen now. In the mix. Great. So now we could So now we could actually delete our bass high track completely. And we're only left with our bass low, which now become our regular bass track. Very nice. So what's it what I don't like so much about it, or which, let's say this way, could be improved? As you can see here, now we have a splitter on this track, but we have no indication whatsoever that there is a splitter. So it just basically looks like it looks like as if I had five plugins directly on this track. Whereas if I open one of them and click on routing, you can see that of course we did the split, but we have no visual indication of it at all in the mixer. So I think um, there should be a solution for this, maybe to to give the the splittered plugins a different color, or I don't know. I'm sure Pistons will come up with something because, in my opinion, this is a quite obvious oversight. And a second thing, to not have to do this, to not have to insert the mix tool here like I did just for the level control, it would be great to have a simple output level control on all of the plugins here which you insert on this page. So, as I said in the beginning, you can do tons of different stuff with the splitter and I will do a few more videos with uh, specific applications in future. But I hope that this video helped you to get a nice overview what it can do. And yeah, see you soon in the next video. I've been David. Bye bye.